Sounds like you guys maybe need to go to therapy. Welcome to Books and Banter, formerly known as Between the Lines, a podcast about books. I'm Janine, a library clerk. And I'm Jess, a branch admin. And we both work at the Winkler branch of South Central Regional Library. In this podcast, we talk about books with our own twist. We read the first half of the book and predict where it might be going, and then finish reading the book and discuss the second half. There will be snark, there will be spoilers, and depending on the book, there may be references to violence, sex, and other adult topics. So if that's not for you, stop listening now. All right, let's get into this week's book. Alrighty, today we are reading Look Out for the Little Guy by Scott Lang. We have a special guest joining us today, Kelly. Hello! (laughs) Kelly works here at the Winkler Branch with Jess and I. So, uh, summary of the book. This is the incredible story of an ex-con turned world-saving superhero. In Look Out for the Little Guy, Scott Lang shares with the world a bracingly honest account of his struggles and triumphs. From serving time to being a divorced dad to becoming Ant-Man and joining the Avengers... These are the stories of epic battles won and lost, as this everyman turned superhero finally tells all. From the official account of what really happened between the Avengers and Thanos, Mm -hmm. to how shrinking (laughs) down to ant size really feels, to the challenges of balancing the roles of hero and dad. Clearly, I'm not familiar with (laughs) Avengers. Uh, Across his many adventures, big and small, Scott has gathered the wisdom of countless amazing experiences into this, the first memoir from a real-life Avenger, Once you learn the unforgettable details of his epic journey, you won't need to be reminded to look out for the little guy. Introduces the man behind the hero and the hero I call friend, Bruce Banner, fellow Avenger. I believe this is Lang's first book and it is a standalone. (laughs) Scott Lang graduated from (laughs) MIT with a degree in engineering, but turned to a life of crime to punish a corporation that had swindled its customers. While in prison, his wife Maggie divorced him and took custody of their daughter Cassie. Lang becomes the successor to Hank Pym Mm -hmm. as Ant-Man when Pym allows him to acquire a suit that allows him to shrink in size but increase in strength. Scott then undertakes the journey of a petty criminal becoming a hero by fighting Darren Cross slash Yellow Jacket. There you have it. Let's get into it. Who else is as confused by this book as me? Just me? Not at all. Yeah. No. (laughs) So So you've never seen like any of the Marvel movies? I know nothing about Marvel. Like I know the character names mostly. Like Mm -hmm. I know there's Ant-Man and Captain America and uh, maybe that's all I know. (laughs) (laughs) Captain Marvel. Thor. Thor, yes. I know Thor. Like I know. Spider-Man? Yes. Okay. The main. I know the characters. I don't like. I saw one of the. Um, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies like the first one mm. that's about or I've seen bits and pieces of Captain America but Captain that's America's it. not great it, that's why I've only seen bits and pieces of it but that's kind of where my uh, Marvel knowledge ends so right off the bat I will say if you are not familiar with Marvel get yourself familiar with it before you read this book <laughs> or don't read or just book. don't read the book yeah. because I mean that's a commitment getting yourself familiar with yeah. Marvel even if you just stick to just the main movies mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's like what 20 some odd yeah you gotta follow the whole arc and like Like, yeah there's a lot so uh i was i I literally wrote down what the heck is going on here (laughs) because i just don't know so that's my initial first thoughts well i mean scott lang is not a real person right i know that (laughs) because i think that's just worth putting out there (laughs) he may have a doppelganger you don't know (laughs) his long lost twin yeah who also suspiciously doesn't age. Yeah. We should uh, talk about the cover because it's just like a giant picture of Paul Rudd's face. <laughs> there we go. Let's do that. Talk With, about which the cover. would draw many people in, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then a little teeny tiny, I think this is Ant-Man mm-hmm. on his shoulder. Which <laughs> I, I didn't, didn't even notice. I didn't that notice really? that either for the first bit. Oh. All of a sudden I was like, oh, there's a little guy there. What do you know? See, that's the thing I find with reading ebooks is you see the cover like once mm-hmm. and then not again. You don't know. So half the times I completely forget what the cover is, which means I also forget who the t- author is and what the title is. Yeah. So if you ask me what book I read, not a clue. Was it good? <laughs> yeah, it was. Couldn't tell you who, who wrote it or what it was called. So. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Cover related, I like it. I think... I mean, most people know who Paul Rudd is, even Mm -hmm. if you're not a fan, right? But I do like that they have the little Mm Ant-Man. And, like, even on the back, I love that they 
kept with the theme as though it was real. They committed. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I love that there's, like, Bruce Banner and, like, Dr. C- Stephen Strange and, like, giving all of their, like, reviews and stuff for mm-hmm. it. And I love that, that that continued on the outside and even, like, the summary and all that. Mm-hmm. Like They committed to the gimmick. Yeah. Yeah, they really did. I mean, to be fair, the cover looks like any biography. Mm-hmm. It does. Like, And it doesn't... I like the fact it doesn't look like a superhero book. Yeah. Because quite often it's like, we've got the primary colors and the dot patterns and like, pow, it just doesn't have any of that. Mm. But also having said that, if you were a person who didn't know, like, <laughs> I did, a little bit of heads up would be good. Yeah. Like if I didn't, if you hadn't told me about this book and I had just seen it and I was like, Paul Rudd, Scott Lang, what the heck? <laughs> and like, I would have been confused. Yeah. yeah. You know, so for somebody, there could be an unsuspecting victim out there who <laughs> checks it out and, uh. Somebody that's just a fan of what is a clueless <laughs> doesn't know or what's going on. Or somebody who sees the title and says, "Look out for the little guy." Oh, hey, I liked him back from Friends too. Yeah, mm. Crap. I always forget that he's in Friends. Crap yeah. bag. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite. <laughs> uh, Princess cuts fail up and Yeah. Oh yeah. But so. um, but no, uh, yeah. So I can see how like. If you're just glancing at it and you don't follow that, you, there could be some confusion. Mm-hmm. But also, I love that they've committed to the point where there is that confusion. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, because it is, if you're going to do something like this premise, mm-hmm. like, just do it well. If, yeah, go yeah. all the way. Like, yep. it, if you break character halfway through, it's no fun. No, yeah. they definitely get props for, for that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's sure. definitely a gimmick. Like, even, like, the author bio and mm-hmm. then in the book and stuff. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Graduated from MIT. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just find it hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, also, how does this man never age? I don't like, know. He I know. I think he looks the same. He actually looks like, better than he did, like, <laughs> in Clueless, which was, like, 90, what, 7, 98? I think it was in the 90s that movie came out. Yes. I feel like he looks better than he did then. I can lie. To be fair, you've also aged, so your tastes have probably changed. <laughs> Maybe. But I feel like my face has actually aged, whereas his mm-hmm. is not. True. It's disturbingly not. It's like, weird. Uh, it's yeah. suspicious at this point. It's because he's a superhero, guys. Oh, yeah, right. Mm. It's going to be so shocking when he does actually age, though. It's like, oh, Paul Rudd with gray hair. <laughs> I know. Do you think he dyes it? I don't know. I wonder how, how old he is. 52, 55, something like that. Okay. He's in his 50s. Older than you and looks younger. <gasps> wow. Ow. Shots fired. What the? Uh, you once told me that I look like 10 years younger than I actually am, so. You do, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and yet he still look, looks younger than me? Yes. It's freaky. There's a point where it stops being human. Yeah. Didn't Starts he win like alien. Sexiest Man of the Year one time or something? Mm-hmm. Probably. Do you know if you the, haven't aged, inevitably at some point it'll pass down to you. <laughs> Would you know who the sexiest man is this year? Patrick Dempsey. Yeah. Why him? What? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird? I thought that was the doctor, weird. Doctor, what's his name? Not Stevie, that's the McDreamy. other guy. McDreamy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know. He always like, creeps me out a little bit. What is he What is he doing? Does he have some a movie coming out or something? You know, <laughs> I don't know that job. he's <laughs> been in anything recently. No, I didn't Isn't think Isn't he so. like into... He raised cars, cars or yeah. something, right? Although he was in, oh, the Enchanted movie, the Disenchanted oh, or whatever, right, the yeah. follow-up. I yeah. was disenchanted with that movie. I haven't seen it yet. Don't bother. My kids have watched it. It was but. weird. Your time yeah. is better spent catching up on the Marvel movie. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Well, I'm not sure that this book has convinced me to start yet. Okay, but. But, but don't let that sway you <laughs> because I love the Marvel movies. Yeah. Like this, this book and is honestly, not a good representation of the Marvel movies. No. Okay. And, okay, so this is where I have... Sorry, can I switch? Like, yes, divert, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is where I have a hard time knowing who this book is for. Because, obviously, it was confusing to you, mm-hmm. someone who does not know a lot about Marvel. And I don't know how Jess feels, but for someone who knows a lot about Marvel, mm-hmm. I did not... Like, I'm not gaining anything mm-hmm. from this. Mm-hmm. See, that's... The so thing. then, I don't know, like, is it just for kids to, like, get a the same info but from a different source um mm-hmm. like it felt very juvenile mm-hmm. in the reading of it in a way um that's the thing that struck me too the writing style is very much like i'm like is this a junior fiction yeah because mm-hmm. it very much feels that way but that's the thing too like i read the first half of this book in like half an hour i kid you not and the entire time i'm like saw that in the movie saw that in the yeah. movie, saw that in the movie. Mm-hmm. like i was hoping there'd be a bit more like background like yeah. kind of yeah. what you didn't see yeah 
you know, he well, and then, falls down a rabbit hole. Like, something more. This is just the movie so far, like, word for word. And along with, like, self-help sprinkled in. Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't, I wasn't expecting that. Like, when you think of a biography, I don't know, you don't think, like... Oh, by the way, don't go to prison like, so you abandon your child. Yeah, like, here's like, all the life lessons that you should follow kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know, like, mm-hmm. you can pull from biographies, right? Like, and yeah. say, oh, I shouldn't do that, or, you know, but... but <laughs> <laughs> different parts of a biography will resonate with different people. Right. So yeah. you can't really even go so far as to go... Do this. Yeah. Don't do whereas this, this was just mm-hmm. very like yeah, part of it felt like I was reading like a junior mm-hmm. book and then the mm-hmm. other part was like self help, um, I don't know. Learn what what do you call mistakes. those people? Life coaches or yes. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Very life coachy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also I feel like normally you can pick up a biography on a person and know nothing about them and you learn about their life. Mm-hmm. Right? Like this, I guess it's about his life, but it's confusing if you weren't there Mm -hmm. so that's the thing like it tells you what the movies are about but not enough that you can understand it without knowing what the movies are about otherwise this book would be huge like yeah but they could do a better job of it (laughs) but then but then if they're not going to go that route Mm -hmm. then they need to lean into the fact that the people who are reading this are marvel fans so give us something more than what we've already stop just rehashing yeah like because there's so many things that they could even whether it's true from like comics or stuff, but even like the day to day things that yeah. they, they could make up, like add to this person to make it seem mm-hmm. more real versus right. mm-hmm. just rehashing the same. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's very redundant mm. and yet vacant. <laughs> also, the flow is kind of confusing. Oh, me. yes. Like first of all, the chapters not having not having numbers, which mm-hmm. that is already an issue but if you're gonna have (laughs) named chapters Mm -hmm. have a table of contents tell me what page it's starting on Mm -hmm. so that was one of my biggest first grapes of the book was that's the thing that gets me i'm like name your chapters if you must but number them as well yeah they should have numbers yeah it's like books that don't have page numbers oh don't even get me started that's (laughs) the worst like those drive me up the wall how is that not standard just put a page number on there. I have to know how far I am yeah. or how much farther I have to go. That's the nice Many thing about e-books is it's like the yeah. percentage based yeah, or whatever. I, like that. But I use that every time. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's the thing though. If you have to mend a book because a page fell out, yeah. you're reading the book now. You have to because there's no way you can. <laughs> Drives me up yep. the wall. Yeah. I also did not care for the narration style where he's like talking to the reader. I don't Mm-mm. like books like that where the narrator talks to the reader. Like, just don't don't talk to me. I don't And there's <laughs> I don't a know. point where I'm like, how many quotation marks and parentheses can you put in everything? <laughs> Stop it. There's like five in one page. <laughs> I almost wonder if that learn how to write the, the narration, like talking to the reader, if that almost made it seem more juvenile too, if that yeah, was what maybe. part of it was. Like that could be. Um but I did the one thing I did like and I don't think they accomplished it fully, but I did like how they tried to make it like humorous too, because yeah, Paul, they tried. first of all, Paul Rudd <laughs> and Scott Lang, Ant Man, like they are, they do have that like humor, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think there was funny. There were a few funny like comments or jokes in there that made it like they're kind of like halfway on the funny scale. Yeah, like it's not like I'm reading this and going, "Wow, so serious," but at the same time. I didn't laugh once. <laughs> I smiled a few times. <laughs> but that's all you got out of me. It doesn't capture the humor of the movies. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they may have done, like, the talking to the reader thing partially. Like, in the Ant-Man movies, there's the... Oh, who's the guy? There's several guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. There's, yeah. <laughs> the guy. No, the guy with the thing. Yellow Jacket? Not Yellow Jacket. Okay. One of his friends. Oh, the the weird one the weird one the weird one um yeah purple jacket <laughs> <laughs> we could just make up lies about this <laughs> you know, like, i would have no idea you could tell you me wouldn't anything believe it, wouldn't. but there is a giant thomas the train just in the middle of really? things really yeah Lu- louise louise yeah. yes where he does the like and then i said to her and blah blah blah, blah. like <laughs> this only makes sense if you know the movie <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. no but you know what i mean <laughs> like when he does the like back history of how he found out whatever information or found this thing or whatever yeah. where it sort of breaks fourth wall a little bit I wonder if it's kind of trying to play off of that but missing terribly because it's kind of well, just mm. and like I can see how maybe by speaking to the reader it makes because the whole thing is them trying to make it as though this is real right yeah. mm-hmm. so like by saying that you're kind of giving the 
Scott Lang, like, an active voice Mm -hmm. and, like, making it seem more like, okay, this is actually, like, real versus it might read more like a story. Maybe. The thing is, I've read books in third person where the characters end up more real than that one. (laughs) Like, are they trying to make him feel more personable or, like, this guy could be your buddy or... I don't think so because, that... for me, they're kind of missing the mark on that. Well, yeah. Like, I'm halfway through. I'm, I'm annoyed at the guy already. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not the only one. Well, Which, if, if it, it is... can make you annoyed at Paul Rudd, that, <laughs> that's saying something. I'm sure Paul Rudd is fine. But <clears throat> I'm annoyed at Scott Lang already because part of it feels like, between the style and everything... Like, they're talking down to the reader mm. when they're like, oh, don't go to prison and abandon your child. No really? kidding. <laughs> you think? I've never considered that. Prison was on my to-do list. Yeah. I like, thought, thought I'd go spend a few months there. Well, yeah. and Next maybe break. that's my qualm with, like, uh, the life coaching <laughs> thing in general. But, like, some of the comments, right, it's like, oh, you're supposed to look out for the little guy and, like... I don't like do your part, be your own superhero thing. Yeah, and I'm like, I, yeah, something about that just is like really Feels obviously very juvenile. Yeah, and like pat you on the head. Yeah, mm-hmm. like obviously you want to look out for everyone, but is that something that you need the superhero to tell you? I should certainly hope not. <laughs> well, some people. If you do, you might. should probably go to a psychiatrist to make sure you don't have like psychopathy or anything. <laughs> well, just you know, some people don't though. They look out for newer. No themselves. But is Scott Lang going to convince them? my child numero uno so everybody Duke. looks out for him. <laughs> That's an excellent name. For Hello, child. would you like to babysit numero uno tonight? <laughs> but it should be your second numero child. Numero uno is in the principal's office oh. again. It should be your second child with the name numero uno. No question as to favorites there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the potential with that name, honestly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> numero uno and the other one. But name the other one the other one first. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> my first one. <laughs> Here's my first born. Your name is the other one. <laughs> and my second born, numero uno. <laughs> I think it's official. I'm not allowed to name kids now. <laughs> oh, if you saw the list of names I had when I was uh, in my late teens, <laughs> they wouldn't have allowed me to have kids either. I'm not in my late teens. I should know no. better. <laughs> no, but anyway, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I'll just have to have somebody yeah. audit any names I choose for children. They don't actually do that. My brother, they should. My brother used to work at St. B as a computer programmer, and they were developing a program for labor and delivery. And so when babies were born, then their info got in. Mm-hmm. And so he, the names that he saw... Don't they deny it, though, if it's something, like, really bad? Like, because often... Sure. I think I've seen, like, articles... In it. Well, articles where it's, like, if it's... You cannot name your child Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Like, right. there's, there's certain there things was, that kick back and say... But there was still some, like, names that should not have been. Like Abel Elon Musk. Yes. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You're not allowed to do <clears throat> non-English characters in an English name. There has to be some kind of translation mm. so that it can be added. If you want to name your child a Greek name, there still has to be the English spelling for it. Mm. If you try to put Greek characters in the middle of an English name... Nope. <laughs> okay. But... I believe it's Norway or Finland or Sweden or one of the Nordic countries, <laughs> you know, pick one, where you actually have an approved list of names that you can choose off of. Mm. I'm like, okay. But when people are naming their kid Abzavith, you think that that's just fine. They're naming them what now? A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, that is how they spelled their name. I've just heard A, B, C, D, E is Absidy. No, these ended, <laughs> added an F. <laughs> like... <laughs> There's, I saw one where somebody's naming their kid Rifle, spelled R E I G H F Y L. Yeah, oh gosh. it's mm-hmm. like reading a fantasy novel. Except for this is real life, and there's not even a dragon. <laughs> Although I do find it hilarious since Iron Flame, you've just been. Oh, was there a dragon in this one? <gasps> Guys, don't say anything. I want to read that one yet. <laughs> well, there's dragons. Sorry to spoil it. Oh gosh, <laughs> I don't think that part's a spoiler. <laughs> I should hope not. Now I want to read all the dragon books. Although that being said, I go into pretty much every single podcast book absolutely blind. So <laughs> you could quite easily flip in something where if there's not a dragon on the cover, I would Well, know. hey, this one I think you had a pretty good idea if there would be yeah. a dragon or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this one. This is very ob- like, well, if you if you know what you do know, for you it should be very obvious what it's about. <laughs> if I know what I do know. <laughs> Which is very no. I'm just going to say very little. <laughs> but I, if you know, and you do know, yes, 
not which you, you yes. know. But see, that's the if thing. One knows. I'm a little bit disappointed in this book because I already know everything that I know, and I wanted to know what I don't know. And the, the mm. this sounds like a Doctor Seuss ride. <laughs> 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 but yes, I agree. And like the and then the rest, the filler stuff is just like the life coachy part. Mm-hmm. And I think there was so much. The concept is so good that it's actually frustrating that it wasn't. That's the thing. Like. I want to hear about the time he got stuck somewhere. Yeah, like give us these little things that would never make it into the movie because yeah. they're not important mm-hmm. enough. I want but the we deleted want to know. scenes. Yeah, that's what I want. I want the deleted mm-hmm. scenes of Scott Lang. Yeah, not Scott Lang, life coach. Well, because honestly, they could do that with so many of the characters. Like yeah. make it a whole series and have like you know have like little insights into their day to day life or yeah the funny stories that like mm-hmm. would never be important. But and like the reader the, wants to know in the Avengers. Because there's so many characters. I mean, there's how many people just on the end game yeah. poster? Like, it's bonkers. Nobody really gets that much screen time. No, so then it's just put little in blitz. some of the pieces mm-hmm. where, you know, the coffee break of the end game. Fighting Thanos. We still have to go get a burrito. <laughs> you gotta eat. Yeah, yeah. There's very few yeah. moments in the movies where it's like the the normal part. And I think it wasn't Robert Downey Jr. wasn't he the one who said something like that? Like he actually mm-hmm. wanted food or something. Yeah. And then that's why they incorporate I don't know. The first um, Avengers after the the after the credits scene, um, it was just all the Avengers sitting around a table eating chimichangas. Hmm. Which Which was just funny. Yeah. But yeah. But things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Like they, they are technically real people in that world, right? And mm-hmm. so then they would have more stories mm-hmm. like that. Like this comes off quite a bit like in the Avengers universe, Cap does like these promo things of like stay in school yeah. kids, don't get <laughs> mm. in trouble. Mm-hmm. This is the book version of that. And I don't like Captain America, so this is making me very annoyed. <laughs> oh see, I well I my love for Captain America is like crossover with Chris Evans and it's hard to like separate, separate the, two. the two. Yeah. But I have no love for either. This is also He's very fine, much like Look at me! I'm an Avenger. <laughs> yeah, at, I'm the I'm a little guy, and I'm. A Which is funny because like, he keeps playing down that he's the relatable Avenger, right? Mm-hmm. That he's like, oh, like there's Thor and Captain America and all these mm-hmm. people, and then there's me. Yeah, and like yeah. the boring one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's self-deprecating while at the same time bragging. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because I actually love self-deprecating humor. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, that's one of my favorite forms of humor. And this it's still not, just... This misses the mark on pretty much in everything. in a humorous way. It was short. Yeah, it was short. <laughs> it was a fast or it is short, I should it say. It nailed that. Yeah. It's a very done. easy read. Yeah. Uh, uh, I really think if it was junior fiction, mm-hmm. that would have be- made yeah. more sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think as junior fiction, it would do much better. Yeah. As adult fiction... Or yep. even YA. Well, and honestly, there wasn't even, even a YA, ton in here that would make it adult mm-hmm. fiction, would it? Not there was, yet. There was, like... There's no blood, no guts, no gore, and he's on house arrest. <laughs> yeah. Like, there wasn't very... And even, like, the language that's used, like, everything yeah. is very friendly. So I don't even if know why they put it into... Mm-hmm. Adult. Well, that's the thing. If you're comfortable with your kids watching an Avenger movie, your kids could read this book. Yeah. It's the same. So far. Well, yeah. So far. That's so true. Maybe <laughs> the second half. I mean, spicy. honestly, the visual or like some of those, like even like Guardians mm-hmm. has so much gore or like, you yeah. know, like so much death anyways, obviously. It's they're, not, they're definitely over on their slime quote on that one. Definitely. But <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like these, <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a sudden turn where Scott Lang works in the red light district. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but he does have a, I don't know. Are they married? Is she his girlfriend? Hope. Yeah. Hope is his girlfriend. Okay, so. Slash the one that keeps him in line. <laughs> if if they start delving into their relationship, it could get spicy. Which, no, they're already past the, like, meeting and. The troubled part. Like, yeah. But their <laughs> comments about the relationship kind of makes me question, I'm like, is that a good relationship? Yeah. Like, there were some instances where, like, he was talking about the troubles that they've had and stuff but sometimes there was like comments where I was like oh I don't know that that's like the healthiest or that's the thing there's been a couple comments where I'm like Scott (laughs) sounds like you guys maybe need to go to therapy I was like (laughs) did you really like how would Hope feel about reading this book that Mm -hmm. he wrote you know well that's the thing there's a couple like very 1960s comments of like the old ball and chain and you know she's the one that keeps me in line where I'm like well you're kind of a difficult person (laughs) not a super difficult person but like yeah of course they're gonna need to keep you in line you are when you look at him as a character he's working for 
whatever the company is, PIM, whatever, having no experience really with anything. And now you're running around in a teeny tiny suit going, I'm an Avenger. Yeah, somebody's <laughs> got to keep an eye on you, too. Goodness knows yeah. what you're going to shrink. You already told us about the exploits of the jelly donut. You can't be trusted. You should have done chocolate cake. Everybody to be, I was going to say, to be fair, what would you do with that power, Jess? Well, I don't know. It'd be so tempting. Because one of my favorite series when I was a kid is The Littles, where they're people that are like an inch tall hmm. and they have tails. <laughs> And they live inside the walls, and they have, like, a button that's their table. So there's a part of me that goes, well, we'd be reenacting the little pretty dang <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, like, there's, <laughs> there's some of that stuff where I'm like, it'd be kind of fun to be that little. Yeah. And the other part of me goes, well, a pentagon's going to be easy now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a horrible I, I like how it, it tosses between, like, juvenile, um, like, childhood <laughs> flashback mm-hmm. to, like... Crime. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty mm-hmm. much. Pretty no much. in between. I <laughs> couldn't be trusted. I'd be making like button tables or I'd be invading something. <laughs> Probably forcing all of the library staff to do- yeah, <laughs> yeah. join us. <laughs> Sit in your little chair. <laughs> Eat your tea. You could make life size littles. Right? No. No? I mean, you could, but no. Is it but either, part of okay. it is they're, they're like this big. Okay. And there's like a little glider and. They have, like, a Ferris wheel and a garbage dump oven made out of an old bicycle tire. Like, it's just fun. It's like, honey, I shrunk the kids. Sort of, but better. <laughs> a little less parental neglect and or abuse. <laughs> <laughs> also, why I'm terrified of ants. And so the scene where he's, like, trying to learn how to communicate with the ants, mm, I'm like, this yeah. freaks me out. It's gross. It's disgusting. It's ants. Ugh. Maybe Ant-Man isn't for you. No, <laughs> I don't think you, so. You know his name is Ant-Man, right? I know. I know. And he controls ants. You know, also, I didn't choose this book. Was, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that was on, that was on me. Fine. Look on the bright side. It's not Snake Man. <laughs> oh, that would be worse. Yeah. Eel Man. Bird Man. Bird Man? Ooh. Isn't there a Bird Man? <sighs> Who's the guy from Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Oh, the yeah. first one? Bird Boy. <laughs> Bird Boy. That's the official name. Um, He's got wings. Yeah. Uh, the Vulture? The Vulture. Is it the Vulture? I think so. Yep. Any predictions for the second half? Uh, you I mean, got me. <laughs> I think it's, it's going to be of, exactly like the rest of them. Yeah, like I was going to say, like, what twist could it have now that would be different, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, it's not as though we're going to go through the second half. Because if you look at the chapter titles in the second half, it's like Endgame, and like it very much follows the movies. The last movie was the Quantum Mania. So... It's not as though there's going to be any great big... Like, Maybe Scott un- Lang has a deep, dark unless secret. They, this isn't his book to announce his retirement. <laughs> <laughs> unless they, it. like, put in, like, a sneaky hint towards something. Maybe, but they already did that in the movie. Yeah. Because they already hinted on the... Who's the other dude? He showed up in the Loki miniseries as well. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. So their next big bad, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's probably just going to be more of the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit disappointed by that, honestly. I mean, at least it'll be a short read. Yeah, for sure. That's, <laughs> That's the benefit. Oh, well, another half hour. I just feel bad because this is the book I picked, and yes. I I wanted, no, no. but I wanted it to work out because, mm-hmm. like I said, the concept is so. The concept cool. is it is really cool. Um, they could have done a lot more with it. I feel like yes, or market it as junior then, mm-hmm. like if you're gonna yeah. go this route. But yeah, I also kind of feel like they could have done this with different Avengers, and it would have been more interesting. Are you thinking like one of the more main ones? You could have done it with Thor. Because honestly, having more history of, well, like, he, he fights all these other battles and like, oh yeah, we brought peace to the seven realms. And it's like, can we get something on that, please? <laughs> <laughs> more details would be lovely. Maybe like, this will be a series. He's got a lot more going on there. But maybe this one, because he's kind of like an, a normal human. Yeah. <laughs> Who can normal. become an ant. <laughs> um, Normal-ish. Yeah. But speaking of, Sorry, the flying ant part is so cool, and I would love to do that. Yes. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Normal person. Normal person. Oh, because of that, I think it lends itself to this concept well, right? Mm-hmm. Because versus, like, Thor, well, like, he's not from Earth in that it thing, right? Like, it's become a lot more fantasy. Yeah, so, like, this, Nordic I can see how it was a good sure. pick, but it could have also been, like, well, now I... Hmm. But, um, yeah, it could have been, like, one of the other humans, mm-hmm. right? But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would be kind of interested to see if they made this into a series. Mm-hmm. 
But on the other hand, I don't know that this book has impressed me enough that I would pick up another one of the series. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent idea, though. Like, if it's done correctly. I think they should (laughs) re-release this. (laughs) Fix it. And then do it again. Fix it, do it again, or do it as Junior, and then continue the series on with, Mm -hmm. like, other people. Yeah. Like, I think there can be a lot... It's got the potential to kind of fill in the gaps between... Mm -hmm the movies and where the character's not on screen. My interest in Marvel has decreased since Endgame. (laughs) (laughs) They've been like, (gasps) well, I know, it was so much building, right, and world building, and, like, I got so attached to, like, the main group of people, right, Mm -hmm. that then, now, after Endgame, I just feel like they've kind of lost direction, and it's all these different paths, and, like, it doesn't ensure connect as much. They're and rebuilding. I'm sort of getting to the point where I can kind of see it, although that being said, I'm about three movies behind it. <laughs> but I'm kind of getting there with the last couple because they're definitely, like, bringing in the new characters. Yeah. And I'm not there yet where I'm like, oh, there's a Marvel movie. I have to see yeah. it. And I don't know that I will be again. I know. Well, especially... Because there's a part of me that goes, well, why would I get attached to these characters? You're going to kill them anyway. <laughs> see, well, and my thing is, I mean, it takes me a while to, like, fall in love with a character especially like yeah like I love that core group and so now it's like they're all much younger and like they're Mm -hmm. I don't know you know it's just not the same yeah so then for me like a book like this to it gives you more about the characters that we like right like Mm -hmm. if it was some of the more original ones and stuff who maybe aren't going to get as much screen time or are like Loki and doing the miniseries yeah it gives you a little bit more adds to the story but but it's not and it doesn't have to be so important that like Otherwise, it would be included in things. But, yeah. you know, something to fulfill. Because Marvel fans are Marvel fans. Like, yeah. you know, like, they, they will read it or they will be interested. So, mm-hmm. But that's the thing, too. Like, like Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, all of those. Mm-hmm. I watched a couple seasons of those, and I just stopped because they would start a storyline in one thing. Oh, so that you have then, to watch it in the other thing. Yeah, yeah. and you have to watch in the end thing. Grey's and Station 19 I, started doing that, too. I don't like that. I hate that. If you start, like, bring in the characters. I'm fine with mm-hmm. world building. Throw people in. I get it. It's an easy way of going. Well, the police department's already cast in the fire department. If well, and it makes it up. more real like, again, mm-hmm. right? Like exactly. it's like, oh, they're out doing this part that is. It's kind of like when you read two separate series from an author. It's like, hey, I know you, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't want to have to watch both shows. Yeah. But I don't want to have to watch both shows. That's mm-hmm. that's my thing. Like, I want to watch this show. Don't force me into that one to finish the storyline because mm-hmm. I hate not knowing storylines. Mm-hmm. As long as they don't go that route in terms of adding more information. Mm-hmm. And I think they've been pretty good about it thus far. Like, they had uh, the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. They had, like, a couple of the mini series. They've got the She-Hulk thing, all the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel. <laughs> they've been pretty good about not making it so that you have to watch those shows. Yeah, it's more like the supplemental movies. versus having, like, plot um, instances in yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So... I think as long as they stuck with that format for the books, they could do a lot with it. But they've got to do better than this one. Because, no. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, note to Marvel, do better, (laughs) re-release it. (laughs) Or don't. It's okay not to. That's true. Well, it's nice to know that as a non-Marvel person that the people in this room who are into Marvel also didn't love the book. Well, see, and yeah, I didn't know, like, would we be worse critics? Because we, you know, because we have that background and we have Mm -hmm. opinions already on it and stuff. So Mm -hmm. then that's, yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, you could ask me what I think is going to happen. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> we could tell you basically where I'm so, I'm so lost right now. And, See, uh, this will be your homework for after is <laughs> to watch all of the movies leading up to Endgame. I did that oh, once. I rewatched gosh, all of them in order. Endgame. Yeah. I did the, the full I did marathon. the whole thing. How many is that? A lot. A lot. A lot, a lot. Especially if you're doing like Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3. Like all of the. for all of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I did either. I'm going to cry if I have to do all of that. I spread it out over, I think, two months. And then I just okay. went I would them like all. to say I did that. I. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very intense weekend. It's like when I do my Hobbit and Lord of the Rings marathon. Yeah. It's no, just that's like a, a weekend. Full, that's a weekend. Yeah. But I'm that's pretty sure like I, I did it. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got a project in front of me and I've got that on there. And that, that's just what we do. Yeah. Oh, you can tell you guys don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> 
my kids would be sitting there as well. Mm-hmm. You have your Cheerios and raisins. You, I have you sit there and watch Gollum be Gollum. Fourteen-year-old dog that's <laughs> toothless, and <laughs> <laughs> my kids would be like, "Mom, I'm bored." I don't know. I want to watch this, Mom. Numero uno might enjoy it. Numero uno might enjoy no, it. No, my kids will be indoctrinated <laughs> in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Numero uno is very into Harry Potter. I could sit with her and watch Harry Potter for oh, a weekend, but I, I could convert her to Lord of, the, Lord of the Rings, no problem. I don't know if you could, but. But I don't know that I have to try. I, I converted you to audiobooks. True. Mm-hmm. Join my religion. <laughs> <laughs> Your audiobook religion? <laughs> I don't know how you follow audiobooks. You listen. It's not, your ears. <laughs> it's not as hard as you would think. I know, but actually. I feel like, no offense, even just in these, you know, it's like, we're like, oh, here, and then a tangent, and then another tangent. And, like, that's me, but when I'm listening to an audiobook, like, I just, like, lose. Mm. track and I just then I'm like oh I'll have to go back and listen you again have to or like be doing like I find for me I have to be doing something yeah I can't just sit and listen because then I fall asleep then I drift off yeah like then but I'm like, like but then when ooh, I'm doing trouble. something I'm I end up focusing on what I'm doing and then I realize oh I haven't been listening to who's uh, yabbering on for like the last you have to be doing the right thing uh, that you don't yeah. have to think too hard about my thing is <laughs> there can't be anybody else talking there can't be music on mm. if I'm listening mm-hmm. to an audiobook right yeah Unless I've got headphones in, then the world could blow up and I wouldn't notice. <laughs> if I've got a project and I've got headphones in, just don't bother me. Mm-hmm. One of my pet peeves is if I am sculpting and somebody keeps going, hey, what about, go away. <laughs> Leave true. me alone. But like, audiobooks have been very good for my productivity. Mm. <laughs> um, we, I listened to Fourth Wing on audio mm. and I think I made a whole toque and what else did I make <laughs> in that time? See, I do, like, I love the idea of having something hands-free because mm-hmm. like I, I, I'm a busybody. I like to be doing stuff mm-hmm. at the same time as something else. Um, but I just, I, yeah, I don't know. And also mm-hmm. I'm really picky with voices. Mm-hmm. Like yep. there's been times where I've tried to listen to something because maybe it's only available in audiobook yep. and I'm so picky about the voice that I'm like, Kate, hey, nope, right away. That's like I found a thing. very yeah, few that I'm okay with. with. You have to get the right first couple and then you're yeah. like, okay, fine. Well, you're not as good as yeah. the other ones, but <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. That's true. Them. Whereas if you start out with all the bad ones like me, then I'm like, oh no, oh no. Like I just don't yeah, like it, you know. The very first audiobook I tried, the narrator's voice, I hated and I couldn't finish it to the point where I bought the physical book mm-hmm. so that I could finish it because it was interesting enough that I wanted to read it. Yeah. And I think we only had it on audio and I found it real cheap somewhere. So, yeah. mm-hmm. but like, um, yeah, her. I was just like, no, I can't listen to this. And I was in the, I was in the hospital, right? So I had lots mm-hmm. of time, and so I thought, oh good, I'm gonna like get a book done. And no, does anybody oh, have any more? I, well, yeah, I think we were talking about um, what, how we thought it would end, right? Yeah. What was gonna happen in the n- next half? Um, more of yeah. the same. More, yeah. I'm thinking more of the same. Um, Sorry, I keep getting distracted by your fact sheet here, and the little thing at the bottom says Paul Rudd has aged six months since Clueless premiered in 1995. Yes, 95 is when that movie came out. He looks no different at all. He must have sold a soul or something. But, like, think about that. 95, that's what? What's his skincare regime? 30. That's, he's a vampire. Anywho. Great concept. So far, not great. Uh, execution is mm-hmm. terrible. I hope the second half is better, but honestly, I don't have a lot of hope for it. I suspect it'll take me at least half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to read it, and I would get more just by watching the movies. I think that's that my I, prediction. I predict that I will be happy when I get to the last page. <laughs> also, probably. <laughs> and we're back with part two of Look Out for the Little Guy by Scott Lang. And joined again today by Kelly, our coworker here at the Winkler Branch. Hello. Alrighty. So, what do we think? I think we all have some thoughts about this book. <laughs> it's junior fiction. It's not adult. Yeah, like, definitely not adult. It it's not adult in any way, shape, or form. Like, and I think for us to have such strong reviews or or thoughts on this, if it was junior fiction, it would have been a much better review. Yeah. yeah. So much of it is coming from the fact that it's at the wrong mm-hmm. it's age. It's advertised for the wrong yeah. age level yeah. entirely. Like, yeah. it's patronizing to adults where it might be 
better for kids. Mm-hmm. And, and like, like all the self motivation and like good oh, morals and, started and on all that. this kind of stuff too. Not that <laughs> us adults don't need reminders. Yeah. Right. But there's a lot where it's just like, hey, like I already know this. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like I feel like this is maybe good things for when kids are not wanting to listen to their parents right but then yeah. they're like oh well ant man said i yeah. should you know and so then it's like <laughs> <laughs> well it's probably for a lot of kids you know? you know so it's like if they maybe they do need those reminders right but for adults like you said it's mm-hmm. quite patronizing it and it's is. like like ant man wouldn't work on my kids <laughs> there was <laughs> there was one thing i actually screenshotted because i'm like are you you're joking me right this is insulting now um babies are not just are Babies are just not people yet. They're like petri dishes of the future, barely formed human stuff, which, and I again apologize for the scientific jargon, feels so friggin' weird. There's no scientific jargon in (laughs) there. He's trying to make a joke, and he's trying too hard to be funny. It's failing on everything. Like, I don't know who wrote this book. Like, who the real author is. Was it the guy, did you read the acknowledgments in the back? Because it stuck to, like, the play right like yeah, it, yeah. it was as though he was writing it and they kept mentioning um rob rob something it, and oh. it says this book literally would not have been written without so, rob yes yes i read and that and then yeah so i'm wondering if that was like the actual the do better actual rob author. do I'm, better <laughs> oh yeah here it says with rob cutner oh yeah yeah so Kay. there you go yeah do better rob cutner it's not on the cover though <laughs> Um, in my mind, That's though, why he doesn't get any <laughs> <laughs> negative reviews on his part. Oh, it wasn't me. It was Scott Lang. Lang. <laughs> but in my mind, it was Paul Rudd. Like because his face is on the. I know like, it's almost that's, tarnishing, right? Yeah, like, a little bit. Yeah. Like I feel like he's such a like beloved person yeah. that like now it's kind of like I see him and I think of this book. Yes, and now I'm like, oh, I hear Paul Rudd's point. voice in my head when I'm reading this book. <laughs> see, I don't. For me, like. This book is not Scott Lang as a character mm. at all. It feels a little bit like it was written by somebody who was only told about the end and <laughs> <laughs> hasn't actually watched them themselves. Okay. And doesn't really know the personality of Scott Lang mm-hmm. or Paul Rudd. So to me, none of this read as him. Okay. But it does tarnish it a little bit because I'm like mm-hmm. serious. Thing. I'm kind of on you the same. You could have vetoed this. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same lane as you where I don't feel like when reading it like I'm not getting Scott Lang or no. Paul Rudd vibes but at the same time it's just association now that I'm yeah. looking mm-hmm. yeah yeah so the thing that I didn't really understand that the book was set up as though the Avengers asked him to write it mm-hmm. to kind of tell their story right was my understanding yes. yes but it reads more like a biography slash self-help book and less like the story of the Avengers with like one or two chapters where he talks about, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. kind of hits the big highlights of, like, uh, Black Widow dying. Mm-hmm. And, but, but beyond that, it's very much. But, like, if the Avengers. Scott Lang story. If I was an Avenger and I had asked somebody to write a book about the Avengers <laughs> like, and I read this, I would be like. You do not get to write the <laughs> next what, one. What the heck is this? This is a book about you. Yeah. Yeah, completely. to his daughter. Yeah. Like, basically, at the so, end. So, like, I didn't understand that part. No. I feel like the brief on this book was like, hey, write this book. Put Paul Rudd on the cover. It'll sell millions. Yeah. What should it be about? I don't know. You pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, I mean, I don't read that many biographies, so I don't know. Most are better what, than this. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, like this leads more to self-help motivational reading. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't feel like. Like, even for his life story, he doesn't do much of it. He mm-hmm. just talks about, like, the morals and the, you know, the... So yeah, I yeah. I agree. I don't quite know what the aim of this book was. And like, I don't know. I feel like if you are someone who's reading this book, except for you, Janine, <laughs> <laughs> you are most likely reading it because you're a fan of the Avengers, yes. um, mm-hmm. of Marvel, like all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, I, um, but I feel like for those people, they already know all of this yeah. stuff. Like they didn't That's add true. anything to it. But they don't need the self-help portion either. Yeah. But they also didn't explain it enough so that somebody who's not familiar with right. the movies can fully understand what's going on. Yeah, they kind of missed both marks there. Yeah, because it's, I was confused 90% of the time when I was reading this book. It's a book of, book of in-jokes that aren't funny. Yeah. That's and like, what it is. It's trying too hard to be funny. I Do you know, like. the only things 
<laughs> this is a harsh critic no one of the things that I did kind of like was like where they asked him questions like at the end of each chapter oh yeah <laughs> at the end of each chapter he like yeah they ask Frequently questions asked for Ant Man Ant-Man questions, or yeah, something. and then like his answers, and some of those were a bit funny. I like the one, "When are you going to grow up? Stop running around in a costume <laughs> yeah. with your little friends playing cops and ro- robbers, and look for Martians, and go back to a real job." What was wrong with a nice computer place? You were always good with computers, and then the answers just, "Hi, mom." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like so, like things like that. Like it did bring some humor to the situation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I think the short like quips are better than like the long. Yeah, chapters. Mm-hmm. I and even that, they fall a little bit flat. I mean, I, I screenshot of one as well. Because uh, the question was, can you introduce me to the Avengers? And the response, part of it, is, you didn't hear this from me, but if you really want to meet a superhero, may I humbly suggest you put yourself in mortal danger from an otherworldly being? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That feels a little bit more like they told Scott Rudd that he could have, you know. <laughs> You can I like how you just said Scott Rudd. Sorry. <laughs> he's, he's been renamed now. <laughs> Sorry, Paul Rudd slash Scott Lang. <laughs> Scott Rudd for the rest of this podcast. Yeah, but, um, but it feels a little bit like it's slightly more in his personality. Mm-hmm. But again, like this is not... Yeah. Not even close to the character. No, really. and like I know like they probably wanted to shy away from adding stuff to the book that is like important right because then you know like with even with some of their tv shows they don't mm-hmm. do that right because that's too much for everyone to follow they like the the big bad reveal yeah in like a movie yeah which makes sense but then i'm like but there's so much like we talked about last time there's so much day-to-day stuff that they could have added in that like you wouldn't have missed out mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. if you know you were just a fan of the movies yeah but it would have added a little bit of background or insight into Ant-Man's life or whatever, right? Yes. That's the thing. This very much pops from scene to scene to scene in the movies. Mm-hmm. That, that's basically what it does. And in a disjointed way, too. Oh, yeah. it's horrible in terms of that. It's very confusing. Yeah. Um, one big question that I had, and I don't know if I just missed this in the book, but he exposed that company, right? They were doing some shady stuff and he exposed them. Why did he go to jail for that? Didn't he help wasn't he right? That's why he went to jail. Yeah, it had to yeah do with that. but it had to do with they thought he was a part of it or something, or somehow he was accidentally a part of it, or was it money? Something to do with money? Okay, corporate espionage or something. He got like it never really for. said why. Like, yeah, you'd think he's technically the good guy in this. If he's exposing the shady stuff that they're doing, yeah, why is he going to jail for that? Mm-hmm. I, I never mean, fully understood that. At one point, didn't he drive his boss's car into a pool? Grand Theft Auto, maybe? Oh. <laughs> well. But that's the thing. Like, you don't really get a complete story out of this. It's not long enough for all the details, but if they put in all the details, it would be too long. Sorry, I just yeah. I looked it up here, and it does say... Um, Scott's criminal streak began when he tried to return the money that, like, was dealt with his company to the like customers and then it resulted in him breaking into his boss's house and crashing his car into the pool like you said so okay, okay. so yeah. he technically stole to replace it like robin hood yeah robin hood mm-hmm. yeah okay which that is quite a bit the vibe that ant-man has is robin hood you know the snarky you know i'll, I'll break the law but i'll do it in a funny way mm-hmm. and for, for the good greater reasons. good yeah um which is, it works in the movies, but doesn't come across at all in this book. <laughs> Did you get Robin Hood vibes out of any of this? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Let me tell you what I got from this book. <laughs> so, this is how little I know about superheroes. He kept talking about Bruce. Mm-hmm. In my head, it was Bruce Wayne. <laughs> it took me, like, a full-on, okay. like, couple chapters to figure out that it was not Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. After all, but... <laughs> Bruce the Hulk, right? Mm-hmm. Bruce's Bruce Banner. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I was like Batman. Like, didn't. We should stop calling superheroes Bruce. It's a terrible name. <laughs> also, isn't that the name of the shark in, in Finding Nemo? You know, that's all I think. Here's Bruce Morning. or whatever. Bruce. Fish off, not friends, not food. food. <laughs> yes. Um, we can keep naming sharks Bruce. I'm fine with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the most sort he can re- remain named Bruce, uh-huh. but superheroes we can stop with that. I mean, like. That's how, and this book, if you know nothing about Marvel, this book is not going to help you. No, don't pick it up. I was, 
And if you know lots of things about Marvel... Don't bother picking up this book because everything you hear that you Basically, if you're a 12-year-old boy, (laughs) you might enjoy this book. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of feels like what it was written for. Mm -hmm. Very much the, like, hey, you, the 12-year-old boy over there, this is how you... Be a good human being. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like... Because Ant-Man said so. Honestly, if it was junior fiction and, like, it's someone who has an interest in the Marvel movies but, you know, may not remember every detail or, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. um, and wants that little bit of, like, life coaching, like, good morals added in there. Mm -hmm. It's very Um, much 12-year-old boy, like, in case they have never thought of her or never taught. I would say girl, too, because... Girl, too. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But, But some of the information here is kind of very, like... Duh. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's like the whole thing is look out for the little guy, right? Yeah. And like, I mean, I maybe we're all just stellar human beings. Oh, I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I like to think that most adults kind of, you know, have these life lessons yeah. already. Yeah. But um, I could be wrong. I but. mean, I question some politicians if they were ever <laughs> yeah. you know, got that worksheet in school. But, but also, like, it's not a long book, so it's like, okay, you can't make this book too long or you're going to mm-hmm. lose the people. But it was trying to pack in an Avengers story, a biography, and a self-help book into one, like, 200-page mm-hmm. book, which is too much. It's both too much and not enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, it needed to, do, needed to do, like, one thing or the other. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, make this a biography slash Avengers, leave the self-help mm-hmm. stuff out of it. Mm-hmm. Or then market it as a self-help self-help book yeah but i mean even that it's kind of insulting okay as yeah for adults yes Mm -hmm. for kids i think it would be okay because like automatically adults are seen as a bit like you know whatever Mm -hmm. the the power dynamic is different um but yeah for adults it's like i mean he literally called himself charismatic or something in the book right like um and I was like, part of the charisma of Paul Rudd, at least, and mm-hmm. probably Scott Lang, is that they don't know that they're charismatic, you know? Right. Like, it's... It's very much the self-deprecating, you know, that kind of humor. Yeah. Um, I'd argue it's just straight-up insulting. For their intended audience, it is insulting. I screenshotted another thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to remember Jess, all these insults. Just has receipts. <laughs> <laughs> I have receipts, yes. I will tally up your sins. <laughs> No. Oh, gosh. He says, and I realize that this is when most of the civilian world must feel, this is what most of the civilian world must feel when facing mortal threats, we superheroes, superheroes capitalized. Really, dude? (laughs) Tend to take for granted. Going forward, I pledge not to only save people's bodies, but do all I could to swaddle their fears with my powers of reassurance, comfort, and strength. Gag me. Seriously. Make it stop. Giant eye roll. Like... They Even just the rope word this, choice saying oh, swaddle. Swaddle. It just makes us feel like babies. Mm-hmm. Like, no. I mean, to be fair, if we were dealing with a world where there are aliens and superheroes, I would feel a little bit inferior. <laughs> I'd argue no. Because Natasha Romanoff, or Black Widow... That's true. ...has no powers. That's true. She's just kick-ass. Although, did you read about the shock thing in the yeah. book? Yeah. I is that in the movies? I don't remember that in the movies. I've never seen that in the movies. Like, I kind of want to go back now and go, did you really? Like, maybe it's in the comic books, which I... Don't yeah. shoot me. I don't know much about. But, no, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, for the movies, I've never once seen that. Like, it was very much just like a... Like yeah. you were saying, like a human, like, fighting style. And even style if she does have, like, the shock bracelet thingies. That's man-made, it, it, right? It's basically tasers on your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's still keeping up with Thor, who is... A god, Cap, who is a super soldier, Ant Man, who is Ant Man, <laughs> yep, Ant Man, <laughs> also a human, but the suit does a fair amount of work. Like, meanwhile, she has a leotard, <laughs> <laughs> and she's doing half of this in heels. It's not a magic leotard. Not it's, that it's I'm not. aware of. No. Okay. And then you have Hawkeye. And then you have Hawkeye, <laughs> who's just like, I've got a bow and arrow, yay! <laughs> but like. She does a lot. Yeah. And she is, I don't want to say a civilian because she obviously has training and yada, yada, yada. But she is a regular human. And she does a lot. Also the one who died, right? Yes. Yeah. 
Which I was, like, selfishly glad that they talked about that in the book Mm -hmm. because I didn't get enough closure from the (laughs) It is one of those things where I was reading through it and I'm kind of like, I'm still a little bit mad about this. Well, do you know, like, it was just so annoying because they had, like, one scene afterwards Mm -hmm. and then, like, Tony has, like, a whole big, you know, shindig, but, like... For her, it was just kind of, like, over. Well, you're dead now, bye. Yeah, and I was so mad because I'm like, she deserved more than that. And she's been in the universe from the beginning, and she has made an impact if you look at all the stuff that she's done. Yeah. And, I mean, even, like, she kept S.H.I.E.L.D. together, like, the the Avengers together. While they were... uh, During the blip. Yeah. We've lost Janine entirely. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just looking at you at this point. No, no, keep going. (laughs) Keep going. But it was kind of also done in the book in a... I don't want to say insulting way, but in a very, like, false platitudes kind of way. (laughs) Well, it was very much like, oh, like, I'm Ant-Man, and I don't know her much, or I didn't know her much, right? But But this is what I've been told. But I comment on her death. And, like, yeah, I, yeah, I don't think he was, like, the best Avenger to speak to it. And, like, he did try saying, like, oh, this is what Hawkeye said about this. But, again, it was all scenes from the movie. You know, like, he basically was like, oh, Hawkeye told me this about the fight. Well, mm-hmm. that fight was in the movie, yeah, We right? saw it. We don't need to read so about it. So it's, like, give account. us more, like, stories about things she did, like, mm-hmm. just for you guys. Or, like, you know, they talked about an anti, like, how she secretly didn't, like, shawarma or something. Yeah. You know, tell us more about that. Like, the exactly. things that don't matter but are interesting mm-hmm. if you are a fan i don't know yeah that's what this book was missing i feel like that mm-hmm. personal touch yeah. yeah of like this is what i thought about this or this is how i felt during that time or as opposed to just regurgitating let's, movies let's recount what happened here mm-hmm. in this scene I, but and with the whole natalie death scene there's a part of me that goes shove hawkeye over <laughs> i'm sorry i maintain hawkeye should have gone <laughs> Sorry, but but he has a family. Is are those the movies? I that was their whole point. Care. Are those the movies that uh, Scarlett Johansson went into legal battle about, like not yes. getting paid enough or something? Uh, well, not yes and not technically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it was the Black Widow movie that came out after Endgame. After she was dead, they released a movie about her. Mm-hmm. Oh, because and it had been put sense. off for years, or at least like it had been talked about for years. Okay. Oh, she's going to get her own. She's going to get her own. Oh, she's finally going to get her own. Mm-hmm. Like all the guys, guys got this, <laughs> you know. And then it's like, oh, you're dead. Here, we'll give you one, <laughs> which is really annoying because I'd argue she's got a more interesting story than Cap. Yeah. I would rather watch a Black Widow movie than Cap. She's got Cold War, Russian spies, experimentation. Cap is. I was a good American boy. (laughs) Sorry, I don't like Captain America. I'm biased because I like Chris Evans. (laughs) But it's just aggravating. She she does have like a and like a very tragic history Mm -hmm. too that yeah. And then like her her sister shows up in the movie and I'm like, okay, we could use more of this information. Mm But yeah, anyway, as your question. <laughs> um, that one was released during COVID. Okay. So it didn't have, like, the big theater release. Mm. So a fair number of millions were lost. So she sued them over that because yeah. I think they... Did they release it just to streaming? I I think they may have skipped theater don't entirely. Remember. entirely. I don't know. Okay. Either way, she's Please. more interesting than Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So. Yeah. Cap- yeah. She would have made a better book than Ant-Man. Well, it depends how they wrote it. If they wrote it like this one, then yeah. <laughs> I don't think they could get away with writing it like this one. <laughs> like, I feel like they're very much trying to play on the, like... They could have done a memoir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. of her better. But I think, I think they thought, this guy is relatable. People love him. You guys can't see, but I'm holding the book in front of my <laughs> face because it's just Paul Rudd's face. Uh, we should post this no I'm just <laughs> uh, but I think they thought we're gonna put Paul Red's face on a book and it's gonna sell and that's it and it doesn't matter yeah. if the book is crap well and like I get it that it's more relatable too because then it's like okay it's like the human like you were saying before he's like more human than not right so mm. it's you can relate more to his story and it almost makes it more believable because it's 
a human telling you all about this stuff versus like a superhero right away. Yeah, where it's not like Thor, where after I united the yeah. seven realms. <laughs> like then it reads like, more like a fantasy novel, really? whereas with him, it's like, hey, you get that dose of humanity mm. and fantasy. Um, but like even but, one of the things that I was hoping that they tackle is the blip, because mm. he spent the blip in the quantum realm. Yeah, and his entire summary of it was basically, yeah, it felt like five hours to me. And I spend most of that time shouting hope. Yep. Like, which is one of those w- weird words that... <laughs> just shouting out, hope! Hope! <laughs> if you don't know that it's a person, <laughs> you sound like a lunatic. Yeah. Just like you shouting really out, need some hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I think if it had been marketed for a younger audience, it would have... They could leave it as is and Yeah, it, it would have been so much better. But for an adult audience, we need full rewrites. Do better, Rob. Do better. <laughs> Poor Rob. He's going to regret how he put, <laughs> put his name even underneath Scott Lang. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's just not. The, uh, the one thing I will say is I like that it's a relatively unique concept. Yes. For it being like a fiction but it's also a biography. Yeah. Like I I like that and I like that even like down to the quotes on the back of the book and about the author and the acknowledgments. Like I like mm-hmm. that they were committed to that part. Mm-hmm. Um so that made it interesting. But like, you know, if I have a family member who's a fan of Marvel, would I recommend this to them? No. 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 No, definitely not. So, so a lot of unmet unless he's potential. a twelve year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> or girl. But Although, the girl, wait for the Black Widow one. You'll get more out of it. <laughs> I'm I'm happy. When I started reading this book, I was like, I really don't like this. Are mm-hmm. they going to love it? And I'm going to be the only one who hates it. So I'm really glad that I you guys didn't like it either. Reading it in my office, if I'm not mistaken, I shouted a no at one point. <laughs> <laughs> just no. Just, I'm yeah. just so done with it. Like, yeah. It took me half an hour to read the second half. Mm-hmm. And that was too long. By the end, I'm like, no, 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 no. I didn't read the acknowledgments. I'm like, no, we're, we're done, we're done, we're done. <laughs> well, and so much of it repeated itself, too. Like, mm-hmm. all of the self-help motivational stuff, it was, like, the same stuff repackaged into a different whatever. <laughs> it's like, um, oh, I got to grab the uh, AI-generated book that Joanna has in the back because it's about farm tractors. <laughs> and it's like, you may not know about tractors if you don't have a farm. Or if you do have a farm, you may know about tractors. <laughs> tractors are machines. Next page. Machines are out there that are called tractors that you may be aware of if you have a farm. Oh, my gosh. It is so bad. I it's feel good. my brain cells dying. No <laughs> kidding. But yeah, anyway, the, the information was just redundant. Like, yeah. It's be a nice person. Consider not being mean to people and treat others with kindness. Perhaps. Oh, and don't go to jail. Oh, and don't go to jail. Perhaps. Yeah. Whoops, there goes Rob, my plan. Rob Kuttner is uh, an AI. <gasps> a robot. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. I robot Rob. <gasps> robot Rob is such a good name. I would read a book about Robot Rob. <laughs> you may know about robots. <laughs> if your name is Rob. <laughs> your name is Rob. You may be a robot. Hi, Robot Rob. If your name's not Rob, you might not know about robots. <laughs> robots are machines. <laughs> if your name is Rob and you don't know about robots, you ought to, Rob. So another thing, back on top, <laughs> this has nothing to do with anything, but um, just to add more hate to the book, but <laughs> <laughs> pile on. Um, the pictures in there. Oh, I know. I was going to say. I don't really like them. No. Because they don't seem real. No. Um, if like I wanted look, screenshots from the movie, I'd yeah, watch the movie. <laughs> like they seem, yeah, very fake like oh yeah like here's a a clip from the movie kind of thing I think it could have been made more personable again if they had like you know I'm sure he took selfies in his suit right on the couch with pizza yeah like you know when he yeah he made a talk or a point about his cholesterol or something because of the pizza show us him eating pizza the cardboard tunnels they (laughs) seem like fun yeah. yeah, I did like the pictures because it meant that there was less words on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but to be fair, Janine wants a board book. <laughs> Editor Linda here. Sorry, I don't know what happened during that recording session, and I don't even know where to start with editing. So sit back and enjoy the chaos. They'll settle down again soon. If it gets really bad, we'll just duck out early. Yes. <laughs> This is your Paul Rudd ABC book. 
<laughs> a is for Ant Man. <laughs> Can you imagine if they do A and it's not for and? <laughs> What's B for? Princess Consuelo <laughs> Banana Hammock. C for Clueless. Crap, crap bag. Crap bag. Ooh, there you clueless. Go. Oh, and crap bag. Good. <laughs> Too many C's. Yeah. That's uh, funny. That's the next book you need to write, Rob. <laughs> C's for crap bag? <laughs> C's for crap bag. Oh, a board really book for to, adults. I really wanted to pull Rob Rob biography. It's called Seas for Crap Bag. That would be brilliant. And in it, his first chapter about life regrets is being on this book. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if there's like a carbon monoxide in here. <laughs> something going on in this room this week. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. goodness. <laughs> I wonder how much he made. I hope lots of money. <laughs> do you think? Like, do you? I wonder if like all of these pictures are like promo stuff that they had for the movie and then they they just used it to like paint again saw like one maybe two pictures in there that was not just a direct screenshot from the (laughs) film so but like is it just promo stuff that they already had that they didn't have to pay him for entirely likely so maybe he made zero dollars from this book no they still used his likeness so he had to something because like you said before i mean people are more likely to buy it because it has paul rudd on the cover so true but, I mean, part of it kind of feels like it was released because of the actor strike. <laughs> it's the writer strike. Where they're like, give oh, us a little something. Productions <laughs> halted. Quick. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Just pull, pull it from the scripts directly. Just yeah. throw it together. It'll be fine. I feel like we yeah. need to look into the backstory of how this book came about. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. But, no, the only picture that I remember off the top of my head that wasn't directly from a movie was the one where he's standing in front of the Avengers 8. And he made a comment along the lines of, oh, the only way I was going to do this was if they have a, took a picture of me standing in front of the Avengers A and, like... Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, where I'm like, dude, you're working for a billionaire. <laughs> At least ask for a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've been obsessed with sandwiches lately, Janine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Both of the ones we recorded yesterday had sandwiches. <laughs> did you at least eat a sandwich yesterday? I did. I went shopping okay. specifically, so I had sandwiches. Good. I'm so glad. So glad you got your sandwich. Yes. And if you were Ant-Man, you can make a giant sandwich. Exactly. You Maybe could. that fixed the craving. Yeah. No. It's... <sighs> this book could be done better, or it could just be relabeled so that it's junior. And junior. And or honestly, just... they could make it a series then for kids. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, have a couple of the other guys do it too and, like, kind of build on that world and make it, you know, seem more real. But Black Widow could do a self-defense book. Mm. That'd be cool. That I'd read. That'd be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they could do this. Marvel, get in touch. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> so many ideas. Well, we were pretty, like spot on last time like yeah. in terms of what we thought the other mm-hmm. half would be we basically said more of the same <laughs> yeah pretty much and we were not was. wrong <laughs> i will say the second half was a lot more self-helpy versus like regurgitating the movies like the first half was very much like well how did i get movies. here and yeah yeah whereas mm-hmm. the second half leaned a lot more towards you know be nice to people and be kind so i also enjoyed the fact that this book was only like 200 and not very many pages and <laughs> half of it was 213 photos plus the question things at yeah. the end of each chapter and there's Wide large margins, margins yeah. on the page <laughs> yeah, yeah it took me like maybe two hours to read the entire book I'm pretty sure it took me longer to read the last Lily Moore book that we did <laughs> compared to this book yeah, so I'm glad I didn't have to spend hours and hours reading this terrible book. No, that is the benefit. Yeah. Uh, do you have any fun facts for us, Disney? I do. Today's fun facts focus on Paul Rudd because... We're sick man, man. There are some interesting facts about Paul Rudd. For example, his parents were second cousins. When he found this out, Paul Rudd asked, Does this make my son also my uncle? Which I thought was kind of cute. Uh, anyway... 
Since 2014, Rudd and fellow actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan have been co-owners of Samuel's Sweet Shop, a candy store in Rhinebeck, New York, that they saved from closing when the previous owner, a friend of theirs, died unexpectedly. Now I need to go to Rhinebeck. As part of a running gag during his appearances on Late Night with Conan O'Brien, Rudd often brought a clip from the film Mac and Me from 1988, where wheelchair user Eric, Jade Caligori, flies off a cliff while Mac watches on instead of showing clips from the actual movie he was there to promote. The only exception was when he came to promote Knocked Up. Judd Apatow showed up specifically to make sure Rudd would not do so. <laughs> so I just thought that was really funny. Yeah, I like that. Rather than bringing my own movie clip, I'm going to bring the same clip every time. <laughs> I mean, it would be fun. I feel like I remember seeing that Yeah. on like YouTube and stuff. Paul Rudd is a member of the exclusive Saturday Night Live Five Timers Club, a group of celebrities who've hosted the show at least five times. Tina Fey, Tom Hanks, Steve Martin, Elliot Gould, Candace Bergen, Drew Barrymore, and Ben Affleck are also members of the club, among others. Uh, but really, why would you want Ben Affleck to host SNL five times? Yeah, that seems an odd like, choice. Have you seen all those Ben Affleck memes where his face <laughs> just, is like, he looks depressed like all the time now? Especially like right next to Jennifer Lopez. I know. Who's always like so out there and like energetic. She's still very glamorous and, like, and yeah. he's like, do he's I a, have to be here? Yeah. He's a sad melty candle. He kind of is, but it's so hilarious though, all the memes. Anyway. In recent years, there have been several memes about the fact that Paul Rudd doesn't seem to age, which we talked about a little bit in the first half. And I put a little picture here. Paul Rudd has aged six months since Clueless premiered in 1995. Yeah, it's And kind then of there's creepy. like five pictures of him looking the exact <laughs> exactly same. the same. Yeah. Actually, Apparently, having parents that are second cousins are great for your children. Yeah, right. <laughs> So I do think, not try this at home. <laughs> actually, he looks better in the last picture than the first picture. Yeah, but it's the hair in the second picture. <laughs> yeah, that hair's not it's not good. But anyway, um, so a few little fun tidbits about Paul Rudd. There's lots more out there. He's a funny guy. Yeah, he is a funny guy, and mm-hmm. that it's like this book makes me a little mad on his behalf. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I'm like, you know, like it, even if it wasn't supposed to be him, but like Scott Lang is him. But I you know, like it's the like same. Paul Rudd could have done a better job of just writing the book himself. I, honestly, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's one of those things where I'm kind of like, at least it would have been his voice. Yeah. Did Not he Rob get to read the book before he agreed to put his face on the cover? I wonder. I doubt it. Marvel basically owns your soul. Is it like, if you do a Marvel movie, you can't do any other superhero type things, do you think? Like, if you work with Pepsi, you're not allowed to work with any other Um, soft drink companies? I haven't so much heard that. Isn't Idris Elba in both? Who am I thinking of? Idris Elba's in a Marvel movie? Yeah. Mm. He's in, like, all the Thor ones. Oh. Thor, I've never seen any... Thor. I've seen snippets of Captain America and See, snippets of Iron Man. Even those were interesting because they started off in one tone and then they very much went the way of Guardians of the Galaxy and like yes. went humorous instead. Which is better. Which I actually like better. Um, but it was interesting seeing them switch like, at least Guardians was its own thing, right? So they yeah. had that tone from the beginning whereas now it's like the first Thor is like, I don't know. But it's, that's the thing, I kind of feel like a lot of the Marvel characters have slowly just kind of become very much the people that are playing them. Mm, yeah. Mm. Like, Thor is very much Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Ant-Man is very much Paul Rudd. Like, not all of them. And, like, but, Tony is very much Yeah. Yeah. But... Which I think is a good thing. Chris Evans is not. No. Captain. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's sanctimonious. <laughs> Chris Evans or Captain America? Captain America. I cannot stand Did you, that Kate, character. have you seen, Kate, you know he got married, right? Chris Evans? Yeah. Oh, cool. Good for him. Yeah. Well, because, like, so he's been single or whatever for a long time anyways. And now he got married to someone who's 26. Okay. Okay. So my age which feels funny because it's like well okay you're younger than me actually but it feels funny because like to me like he seems older right Mm -hmm. not like so old that it's whatever no but But he's closer to my age isn't he like 40 he's yeah so Mm -hmm. there's like a fair age gap there and then anyways so that's been like hitting headlines right and apparently he has like a really strong fan base but like fans who are obsessive and so I've literally been seeing it on reddit and stuff like fans are freaking out and like saying how like it's like all a hoax and like basically like going full-on conspiracy theory and like 
stalking people and like posting pictures and like it's just like gone super crazy and like every life every time like oh so now like his wife what's her name I forget. That poor girl. <laughs> well, yeah. and so every, like, now she came out and did an appearance with her wedding ring on. And, like, that started a whole nother flurry of whatever. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, you do realize the difference between a mm, actor and, like, mm-hmm. the character they play, right? No, they don't. Um, anyways, so it's been super interesting to... But didn't it come kind of out of the blue, his marriage? Or it, Yeah, it was. I mean, to be fair, it kind of sounds like there's a reason why. <laughs> true, but true, true. but yeah, it's, yeah, hmm. yeah, hmm. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just basically debating me. Do you expose your poor victim to your rabid fan base gradually and let yeah the two mm-hmm. acclimatize, or do you just you go? Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the Taylor I don't know Swift, which is better. Travis Kelsey. Oh my gosh, thing too. Yeah. And lots of people think that's publicity stunt. Yeah. Who cares if it is? You know, I, I don't care. Doesn't make, I, I mean, I don't care about Taylor Swift, but... <gasps> Just kidding. <laughs> I know. I like Taylor Swift. But also, I mean, she's a human. So. But it's funny because Travis, Kelsey, and his brother have a podcast. Right. Yes. And for some reason, like, clips of their podcast have started showing up in my Instagram, like, suggested <laughs> stuff. I don't know why. Because it's the next big thing, so they capitalize. So, one episode, uh, all the Swifties were writing in questions about football. Because <laughs> none of them know anything about football, well, so they're, like, now they're trying to learn about football because... Yeah, I, I have seen kind of a funny. lot of, like, that online where it's, like, the there's football fans... Some of them are becoming interested in Taylor Swift, and mm-hmm. then a lot of Swifties are now trying to learn football or yeah. like My whatever. My favorite thing is the fact that Taylor Swift can't play the Super Bowl because if she did, all of the tickets would be purchased <laughs> by her fans. Yeah, and it would just be a, bunch just of a people concert. Just like, well, we're leaving because the football game yeah. is like boring. Yeah. We're just here for the halftime show. <laughs> just the second half of the Super Bowl, empty stands. Yeah. Oh, all man. of that would be brilliant. Uh, yeah, but. No, I, I don't get the fascination. Like, got married. Good for you. What do you think? I like the gossipy stuff sometimes just because it's fun. I but like the weird facts, like the um, bringing the clip that where the guy flies <laughs> off the cliff <laughs> thing. That's more interesting. Yeah. Or the fact that he owns a sweet shop. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, we're back to Paul Red now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I uh, honestly, it would have been cute, like, for... Scott Lang to mention the sweet shop like in yes. his like that you know, been a good plug, you know yeah. like just like to tie it in and yeah. you know make it seem a bit more whatever yeah yeah you know no I think this book is meh 10 out of 10 do not recommend yeah but I'm a non-Marvel fan so don't take my word for it I am a Marvel fan take my word for it don't do it <laughs> I second that opinion <laughs> except for if you are young Girl. Yeah. <laughs> See, the thing is, I think this book counts too much on the celebrity of it all. It doesn't have the substance in any way, shape, or form to hold up to it. I bet you, and I hesitate to say this because I don't want to offend anybody, but I bet that there are some grown men, Big Bang Theory type super fans, who would love this book also. Explain what you mean by Big Bang Theory type super fans. Well, like, you know, the guys in the Big Bang Theory were, like, big... Oh, like, the characters oh, themselves. yeah, yeah. Oh. Not, not yeah, fans. I was like, you're, you're a fan no, no, of Big Bang no, no, Theory. No, 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 That no, makes no, you no. a fan of me. <laughs> no, sorry, it didn't come out clearly. <laughs> what I meant was, like, guys who are, like, the guys on the Big Bang Theory who are, like, big super fans, collectors. Right. Huge yeah. comic book nerds. Yes. Uh, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way to anybody. If that's your thing, good for you. But I kind of feel like the comic book nerds already have their books. Like the comics, and like they would yeah. just see those as more like truth versus like this would well, be like a... that's always a thing. The comic canon versus the movie canon. Mm. And yeah, that's already a... Yeah. But I wonder if that was more the target audience. They failed. Yeah. Well. I'm they failed saying. at I mean, everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> Poor Rob. Rob. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mean to poor Rob now? Nope. I um, say I my opinion's the same, like I said before. I think remarket it as junior and then yeah. do a couple of from do other people and then yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. But no. I agree. 
It's not the worst book I've ever read. I also think maybe this is something about me that I hate the self-help motivational oh, <laughs> no, aspect I cannot, of it. I cannot do mm. self-help books. It has like, to be done in the right way, and it's very hard to do. There's a point where I'm like, stop cramming it down my throat. Mm -hmm. It's like the, well, I live a fantastic life, and here's how you could too. Stop selling me things. <laughs> Do you know how I could live a better life? By saving the 40 bucks that I spent to buy your book. <laughs> Sorry. I, I did the book order during COVID, mm. and mm -hmm. it was all like peace, love, acceptance, how to calm We hate anxiety. those. <laughs> Like three quarters of my order was that. Word and I were just a bunch of bitter, <laughs> bitter, horrible people. But honestly, there was so, so much of it. And I want to read how to be a worse person. <laughs> yes. How to be the best villain you can be. That is what I want. Have Thanos write a book. <laughs> oh, that would be excellent. Geology with Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Everyone listening to this is going to think we're horrible people. <laughs> if it's taken this many episodes to figure it out. <laughs> the number of times we come in here and Janine goes, oh, I loved it. And I went, I hate it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that's why we're cynical and naive. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. I mean... <sighs> Well, I formally apologize because this was my choice. So, you know. You could not have known that this book would be the dud that it turned out to be. <laughs> we both picked duds already, right? Really. Oh, yeah. We've had some duds on this sh yeah. show. Whatever. I'm going to write Paul Rudd a letter. Okay. Do. <laughs> yes, tell him. I, I got fired at work because I recommended <laughs> your book. Dear Mr. Crap Bag. <laughs> So you lived up to your name, okay? <laughs> Dear Mr. Bay. <laughs> I think also, I, stop I challenge you to a game of ping pong. <laughs> yes. Fight to the death. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we need to stop. It's <laughs> just getting more and more off the rails. And poor Linda has to edit this. <laughs> She's not going to know what to do with it. Is oh. this a peanut? <laughs> So that's what we thought of the book, but those are just our opinions, and we'd like to hear yours. Leave us a comment. Thanks for joining us for Books and Banter, and thanks to our editor, Linda. We'll see you next time. I'm sorry, Linda. <laughs> oh, it kind of looks like it. I was, it is a peanut. <laughs> you know, the book is bad, but that's like the most interesting thing this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should press stop now. <laughs>